and then you can compute term by term. Okay. It's a GX term. Okay. And you get this result. But of course, this result is applicable only for small G. If G is very large, and this is the case for the QCD where the couple cost is very large, you cannot use this statistic. And actually, this program is a really serious program. And in QCD, you will never get a confinement picture if you resolve it on the substitution. And uh, once you recognize that it's almost impossible to make computation for strong coupling, and of course, you can use the numerical calculation. Uh, this morning, I put uh, this uh, integral to my mathematical program. And then we, uh, it's a three-dimensional problem for you. OK, I got the result for the integral. But well, why it is diverging around here and it has a subtle tilt around here? That kind of physical notion cannot be taken away, cannot be uh, understood in this numerical simulation. That's a, that's a very bad point of numerical simulation. Here, you have more good intuition. If G is small enough, then you have a first correction which is negative, and then the second correction is positive, and you have some feeling of one coupling. But in numerical simulation, unfortunately, you never have this kind of detail. So the question is this. We have been given this algorithm for long years, but nobody knows how to compute the partial function. And actually, if you can solve this question in a mathematically rigorous way, then you'll be honored with one million dollars. That's true. I hope uh, this statement can give you some more motivation <laughs> to solve this question. Because okay. three million dollars would be too much. Well, <laughs> of course, I'm doing string theory not for earning one million dollars, but string theory can help for understanding the story of the nature of QC in the following way. What is the string theory technique? We can bring the system to some equivalent system, which is differently looking compared to the original system, but some equivalent different system via so-called duality. Duality means that two theories are equivalent. For example, if the original Lagrangian has a problem like strong coupling with many body Polycom problem, which is nonlinear, then we can apply this string theory technique to go to some equivalent system which is weakly coupled. That's the essential point of this particular string technique. For example, here uh, we have a QCD phenomena which we want to analyze. And on your right, right uh, there is a dual theory which is weakly coupled. In QCD, there are excitations of uh, quotes and blue. This blue ball is a bound state of the blue ball. That's difficult to analyze. Many times, bound state is very difficult to analyze in quantum field theory. And here, meson is a co contact of bound state. And baryon is a proton and neutron. Those are three co bound states. And these are fundamental ingredients for QCD cosmology of bound state. And we want to know what is the mass for these, what, what are the interactions between these two or these three to implement the basic for the nuclear physics. And there are many phases, for example, I want to understand the confinement phase, <coughs> high temperature, or what can we implement this final temperature in theory, or what if we increase the probe density, like in the core of neutron stars, and what is the nature of the photon stars. So all of these kind of questions we want to analyze this uh, simple uh, QCD, but uh, it's difficult. Now, if you use string theory technique, which I will explain later, then all of these physical terms are translated into a hypothetical higher dimensional gravity field. For example, the global excitation corresponds to gravity excitation in its hypothetical case. This is hypothetical higher dimensional field. It's not the Einstein theory for our universe. It's, uh, a, it's it, there is a given Lagrangian for this hypothetical gravity theory, weakly coupled, so we can analyze that classically. 
meson transform to bra bra. And then there is a corresponding object in high dimensional gravity field in weakly coupled form. The confinement corresponds to the presence of black hole in this high, high dimensional theory. Final temperature is Hawking temperature of this black hole. Quark density is an elliptic field in this hypothetical gravity coupled to the theory. And plasma goes to the formation of event horizon. So in this way, there is a good dictionary between a difficult theory and easy theory. So now if I look back to the condensed matter theory, then there is another dictionary which goes between this uh, QCD, hypothetical high dimensional gravity, and In each layer, for example, blue balls look like a phonite citation. Mesons are epistone, parents are impurity. Because the confinement is a conduction phase, and the temperature is a heat back for the theory. Cold density is electron, plasma is a So in this way, we have three way addiction. We can translate each term be very easy to see once you assume that this super thing can go on. Okay, so let's suppose that we have this uh, diction, which I'll explain later. Then how, wh what is the result of this uh, diction? What if uh, we compare the result of superstring theory and uh, let's say numerical simulation of QCD and see the match between these two? This is a typical result from superstring theory and lattice QCD. On your right, we have a result from a morning sun theodon in 1999 about the blue ball spectrum. Suppose I consider SU3 Yamnov theory, which is a gluon theory, and uh, let's say we have the spectrum from the blue balls. Blue balls are bound shape of blue. And this is a result uh, from a lattice field, numerical simulation. It's interesting that actually we have a bound space although we, we never know what is happening in the confinement mechanism. After numerical simulation, you get this uh, uh, spin zero, parity plus, transformation plus state, and the rise state. And then you have sequences of various excitations, spin one, spin two, blah, blah, On the other hand, if you believe in this super string technology, then we can solve, instead of QCD, some higher dimensional hypothetical gravity field. And this is the result. What do you think? When I saw this paper for the first time in 2003, I was so stunned. You see, uh, on your left, this is a result of supersymmetric gravity theory in 11 dimensions. And on your right, this is a numerical simulation of QCD. What a great similarity. <laughs> it starts with 0 plus plus, same like that. And we have a degenerate state 2 plus plus and 0 plus plus, like that. And we have a tendency that uh, from this uh, sequence, this gets heavier to have a higher spin. So at least, uh, Results are completely consistent. Although we are working in very, very different fields. Oh, yeah. So here the colors are only for indicating the depth. I guess the spin. And for black one is for blue. Blue one is for color. Yeah. Right. Of course, there are. So we can improve this approximation in super string theory psi to get closer to that. But even before improving that, the, the most important statement is that even though we are working with very, very different gravity theory, we, we can give a qualitative value to the real QC. There are other, other things. Like here, this is a proton radius computed from super string 
This fundamental force is a basic ingredient for constructing nuclear physics. As I said, nuclear physics consists of the point light nuclear and the forces it uses. If you can compute this uh, nuclear force from QCD, then that is the success of the input of nuclear physics. Here is the experiment. This is the uh, distance between two uh, neutrons, protons and neutrons, and this is the height of the potential. And as you can see, there is a very high repulsive force at a very close distance. And this uh, repulsive force is known for more than 50 years. And uh, nobody knows why this is happening. A very close range of nuclear forces. And recently, there was a nice paper in uh, numerical simulation of QCD. These people worked out the QCD uh, numerical calculation to compute the nuclear forces. And actually, you can see very high repulsive force in addition to the final exchange potential, which makes proton and neutron bound to form a nuclear force. And this is our computation using superspin theory. And it can actually uh, uh, capture a nice property of these nuclear forces, like having a repulsive force and having this state. And also, we we actually could uh, show that uh, this impulsive force is mostly based on the omega mass of the exchange. That kind of thing has never been shown <coughs> in the simulation, except that in our analytic calculation using superspin theory, you can actually work out what is the origin of this impulsive force. So in this way, uh, superspin theory can serve as a good input for many other subjects. I hope I could convince you that superspin theory is now useful, although it has no prediction of particle physics. We could uh, use this superspin theory for solving QCD or strongly correlated material to give some <coughs> insight. It's not really a quantitative algorithm, but it can at least give you a qualitative sense of what what's happening behind this slowly.
What you need to do is to consider a dictionary between these two and map everything into this uh, solvable theory and solve it. And this is the notion of duality. Even though we have two Lagrangians, it is governed by a simple body thing which we never know. And it has two appearances. And one appearance looks very difficult, but the other one is easy. And this is called duality. Why this kind of duality can happen in theory? Let's consider uh, mountain vortices. So suppose that you want to relax yourself, and you go to the bathroom, and then you are in the bathtub. And then you play with the water, and there are many vortices. You And you want to know the dynamics of this vortice, suppose. I want to know the vortices. Then, there are two ways to describe these multiple vortices. The theory A is something like this. It's a field theory of order parameters. In this case, in your bathtub, uh, the order parameter is the height of the water surface. If there is a vortex, then that has a deep thing. So the height of the uh, water surface is measured by this uh, function phi. It's a function of the location and time. And then there is uh, some potential term which uh, governs the dynamics of the water surface. <coughs> I'm sure that uh, there are solutions of uh, this uh, uh, Lagrangian which can give the whole dynamics of this water uh, So this is theory A. But it's difficult to solve in some because this is a highly nonlinear uh, couple of differential equations. So what is theory B? It is a description of particle-like vortices. Suppose that these uh, vortices are particles. Then the particle location is given by this kinetic term. I is labeling the uh, vortices. I go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this, I'm sorry, K is labeling this and I is for x and y, the two-dimensional surface, and t gives you the location. So x of t gives you the location of the vortex. Then there is an interaction between those vortices. Vortices can step that way. So you, can, you need to add some uh, vortex interaction. And this particle-like vortex uh, Hamiltonian can actually describe the motion of the vortex. So here, even though we start with a single object, we have two descriptions, which look entirely <coughs> different from each other. One is a three-dimensional field theory, and the other is one-dimensional classical uh, <coughs> mechanics. Okay. So there should be a relation between these two, and that is the duality which I need to understand. Is there a full equivalence between these two? It sounds unlikely, but if you take some special limit, to these objects, like for example, vortex number should be fixed. We may look at near vortex uh, of this uh, configuration, or vortices may be top on, on top of each other, or maybe we need to concentrate on uh, one energy excitation of these vortices. And after you take these kind of uh, limits, then eventually this theory and this theory can be equivalent. And there are actually mathematically rigorous a situation where these kind of two things are shown to be completely equivalent. I won't tell you the details, but uh, something called ADHN construction, instant on, instant on the cousin of vortices, or non construction of monopoles, those have two descriptions. One is higher dimension, the other is lower dimension. 
that those are shown to be completely equivalent. So there are uh, some examples of uh, this one. Now let me move on to string theory. In string theory, uh, there are objects which are called difference. And difference are something like vortices in this supercomputer. Okay. So once you have a vortex, then you have duality. So that's the essence of this duality. So what is a degree? I will explain that later. But uh, those are characterized by mass and charges, slight vortices. And also on the degree, there is a Yamel's theory, a Bruno's theory. And these two facts are very important to show this so-called gauge gravity duality, which connects QCD and higher dimensional hypothetical gravity. We have two theories. On the D-brain, there's theory A. That is gauge theory for the Stolle couple, and also the rank of the gauge group is taken to infinity. That's one theory, which looks like QCD. And the other is higher dimensional, weakly interacting gravity theory. In, in the example of this, it is a five-dimensional gravity with the standard Einstein-Hilbert curve plus some cosmological constant. And the equivalence between these two was suggested by Maldasena in uh, Princeton in 1980. And it was a conjecture, and it is still now a conjecture for the equivalence between these two. But there are a tremendous number of uh, uh, public, pub, uh, publications which shows that uh, these two should be equivalent from uh, circumstantial confirmation. Oh, by the way, if you want to uh, know more about the deep brain, then I secretly put my <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. So why is deep brain giving the drug? I will explain what a little on the superstring theory. Uh, superstring theory is a theory in which we consider a little string, and if you look at it very far away from that, then it looks like a point cloud. But uh, because it's actually a string, it has an internal degrees of freedom. Suppose that you have an open string, then open string has an internal degree of freedom, which is the direction of the oscillation. So it can oscillate this way or that way, and that gives you a polarization as an internal degree of freedom if you look at that. So open string gives you one polarized spectrum, and that is a massless gauge field photon, photon degree of freedom. On the other hand, if you consider a closed string, then there are two uh, polarizations. One is right mover, the other is left mover. So there are two polarizations. What is the particle which has two polarizations? That is gravity. So a closed string gives you a massless gravity. So this is the essential part of string theory. Okay. Now what is D-brain? D-brain is an object on which open strings can end. This is the definition of the D-brain. So there, there is a hypothetical plane on which open string can end. It's like this. So you have a hypothetical plane. Suppose that you have nc number of parallel degrees, then there are nc squared kinds of open strings connecting. And as I said, the open string gives you a photon like excitation. So there are nc squared kinds of photons. What is that theory? Actually, that theory is nothing but the dynamics of Bruno. But now, the, the, the degree of freedom for Bruno is upgraded from SU2 to SUMC. MC is the number of parallel degrees, so you can put any number of degrees. So if you put three degrees, then it gives you SU3 here, like a Bruno theory. Okay? So this is the definition of theory, uh, degree theory. So the important part is on the brain you have a group of theory. Now, let's consider this picture. This uh, rectangular part is the deep brain, and uh, you consider an open string ending with that. And this is the trajectory of one open string. So the trajectory is one sheet from end to end. And if you deform this, let's pick up uh, some part of this. Then you have these pictures. 
And depending on how you slice this trajectory, it looks like you have you have a closing emission from this deep region. So from this this picture, open stream closed is already, you can actually see that heat wave can serve as a source of closed things. Closed things are gravity. So it's a source of gravity. What is the source of gravity in gravity theory? Of course, in gravity theory, there is one, one object which is the source of gravity. That is a black hole. So from this kind of uh, understanding of string theory, although you start with the uh, gauge field gluon, this gluon theory can be mapped into a black hole. There are some uh, more uh, detailed pictures of how we can construct the prediction. If you feel decoupling, then please keep decoupling. I will spend this in a few minutes for more audience. Okay. <laughs> so here we have MC heat wave. And uh, suppose that I throw in this small closed thing on the surface. Then because this is a heat wave, so it can split into two open things. And uh, these open things are blue. So this is a blue bound state propagating from here to here. On the other hand, if I use the description of black hole, then black hole is residing here, and we throw in this closed thing. So this is the same physical process. So this closed thing is it, a graviton. It's propagating in this curved manifold, a background, and then scatter. So these two processes are the same. Now, the interpretation here is that on your D brain side, you have a gluon bound state, things like blue ball. So, blue ball spectra can be shown uh, from this combination. On the other hand, this blue ball spectrum can be also shown by this graviton scattering problem entirely. So, in this way, we have a dictionary between a very difficult blue ball spectrum computation and classical gravity computation in height. It? It's, uh, some, I, I'm sure it sounds difficult and also stupid since I haven't show you, shown you any equation. But the essence of this duality symmetry in string theory is nothing but this picture. And also, this is the fact, uh, this is based on the fact that there is no proof of this conjecture. If you can put, make a proof of uh, this uh, duality symmetry, then again you will be a professor of this field. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> okay, finally, I will uh, use the uh, remaining five minutes for explaining the challenge to Nicole Park. Hmm. This is the original question. The picture of Nicole Star, what is residing inside the core of the Nicole Star? Big question mark here, corresponds to big question mark in this space diagram. So nobody knows what is happening there. So let's apply this superstring technique to map this QCD theory to the higher dimensional gravity. <coughs> However, as indicated in one clever question, superstring theory is superstring theory. Super Supersymmetry. Supersymmetry is a symmetry which interchanges bosonic degrees of freedom to fermionic degrees of freedom. So, supersymmetry super can treat only supersymmetric theory. However, QCD is not supersymmetric. Okay. So, there is a big jump between these two. We can treat supersymmetric theory. But we want to solve QCD, so there is a gap. So here is a road to get to realistic QCD from supersymmetric situation. Uh, here, number one, this is the gauge theory with highest supersymmetry in 